Welcome to these education videos designed to help you understand the processes you'll go through when undergoing spinal surgery. Knowing what to expect, as well as preparing for the hospital appointments and the operation, goes a long way towards making your recovery much easier and much shorter. The first step is to understand the reasons for why you've been recommended surgery for your spine. This requires a basic understanding of the structure and function of your spinal column and spinal cord. So let's start with some basic spine anatomy. Your spinal column is one of the most important parts of your body. It provides structure and support in order to remain upright, and it allows you to move freely and bend with flexibility. Your spinal column also protects your spinal cord, which is a column of nerves connecting the brain to the rest of your body allowing control of movement. And without a spinal cord, you couldn't move any part of your body and your organs wouldn't function. Messages to and from the brain use the spinal cord, means of transport to tell the body what to do and how to do it. And this allows the brain and the body to communicate. The spine is made up of 24 bones called vertebra. Ligaments and muscles connect these bones together, forming the spinal column. And this has three main segments. From top to bottom, they're the cervical spine, the thoracic spine, and the lumbar spine. Below the lumbar spine is the sacrum, followed by the coccyx, which are made up of vertebra which fuse together during childhood. Between each vertebra is a soft gel-like cushion called an intervertebral disc. These discs act like shock absorbers by absorbing pressure placed upon the spine, and they also prevent the bones from rubbing against each other. So when you're young, these discs are filled with fluid and collagen. And as you get older, part of the normal aging process is that the discs can dehydrate and lose their height, and the collagen structure can break down. Down. Now when that happens, discs can sometimes tear and the inner gel layer seeps out, putting pressure on a number of nerves. Now this is known as a herniated disc and if the disc puts too much pressure on the nerve, it can irritate or damage it, causing mild to severe pain going down the leg where the nerve travels and that's known as sciatica. Some people also experience tingling and numbness in that area. Alongside age-related changes to the disc, the surrounding bony structures of the spinal column can also develop changes changes as you age, putting pressure on your nerves. And one of the more common changes that can take place is a narrowing of the spinal canal where the spinal nerves travel through. This is known as spinal stenosis. The most common reason for being offered spinal surgery is when nerve compression has been identified in the spine, most often through an MRI scan. Alongside this, surgeons look for accompanying signs and symptoms associated with the area of the spine being compressed. And this can include pins and needles, numbness, or weakness in the legs. Surgery usually aims to relieve pressure on the nerves so that they stop getting worse and often improve. The decision to have an operation is a very personal one and should be made in conversation with your surgeon as well as with your family. You need to carefully consider the risks and the possible complications, along with the potential benefits of surgery, as well as consider the full range of alternatives to surgery, such as specialized exercises through physiotherapy, pain medications, and injections.